You're watching Beyond Markets. Welcome, I'm Esther Awuni. On the show today, we're, we're tracking Nigeria's Ease of Doing Business initiative. As always, you can join the conversation with the hashtag Beyond Markets, and you can follow my Twitter handle too, at Esther Ugodaga. Now, in a bid to implement impactful reforms for SMEs operating within the Nigerian business environment, the Presidential Enabling Business Environment Council, chaired by Nigeria's Vice President, Yemi Osimbaji, approved a third 60-day national action plan, which commenced on the 5th of February this year and ended on the 5th of April. Jumoke Oduwale, coordinator, EBES Secretariat, joins me to discuss the impact of this latest reform. Thank you so much, Jumoke. Pleasure to have you on the show. So this is the third one, mm -hmm. the NAP 3.0, and it ended yesterday on the 5th of April. So tell us what's different now and how it, how it has also complemented the other two. The thing about the national action plans is that they're quick, short-term accelerators, and you have to be careful to make sure that there's sustainability. So what we do is from time to time, within about six month intervals, we drill down, check on what we've done before to make sure they're still uh, valid, and then we push further, the strategic intervention of the PEBEC. So this time, consolidating on the first one and the second one, the second one ended on 1st December, we gave the agencies a number of targets to go further in what had been done, and also to ensure that communicate and validate some of the things that have been done before that private sector have not yet validated. So if I go into some of the detail, if we start with entry and exit of people, for instance, there are things that we have been trying to solve and remove, like even the little stickers, I think I spoke about that last time, that's done now. Okay, Train for checking passengers at, at the airport. Yes, okay, for checking okay. passengers, I told you midway when I came here midway, so that's done now. Domestic flights, you don't need somebody putting a sticker, then somebody taking it off. Simple thing, but really irritates passengers, and we're glad that we were able to deliver that for Nigerian travelers. With uh, things as serious as the seaports, um, entry and exit of goods trading across borders, we've made sure that the single interface coordinated by the Nigerian Customs Service is up and running. All agencies uh, com converge in a particular room, and that is where, rather than the importer or the exporter having to go from place to place. So that is really up and running, and we like to get feedback also from the Nigerian public. Um, so is that a 24-hour thing when you say, I I'd like to get more clarity on that because okay. I know doing business at a port, clearing, getting goods out, registering, I know it's a very complicated process. I will hear is. all kinds of stories. Mm -hmm. So I need to know exactly mm -hmm. what, how this is going to change things, if it's going to be drastic, or I just need to know more details. Okay, so how it changes things is that previously an importer, for example, would have to talk to customs, would have to talk to NAFDAQ, would have to talk to all the agencies that might have a course to inspect uh, the particular consignment, which could take days going from office to office, trying to arrange inspections. What we did last year was to have customs coordinate all the agencies. So the importer gets a notice and everybody is in one room. For a period of hours, then your container is called up and it's inspected. So it's more coordinated to so save the, time. Sorry to bother you, there's a long list of people who need their goods to be verified. I'm just they're trying to figure out the, the scenario because if it's they're going scheduled. to take hours for how no, many no. goods? They're okay. scheduled. They're scheduled. Okay. So that's exactly what has changed. They're now scheduled and there's a time you come for your scheduling. The agencies are there. Your goods are inspected. It's still a range right now. Uh, you come on the day. It's still a range and then you're scheduled. But the weight is less considerably less now than it was. Okay, what about uh, conflict resolution or some kind of, uh, you, you, okay, it's your turn and on the day of your inspection, something is missing, maybe a document or some further information is needed. Are you given another day to come? Or yes, if when, you're disputing something, if they yeah. do not, they outright not even approving and you're disputing why they're doing that resolution, how fast is that? Yeah, so that? when there's a flag or when a consignment is flagged down for a particular reason, then it goes to a different process, okay. um, which sort of you have to move it out of the way and let all the other containers, and then when there's a resolution, then that container is taken care of. So it is quite a complex process, quite a few agencies involved in uh, clearing of goods, but we reduced the documentation last year. Uh, for importing, you needed about 14 uh, pieces of documentation was reduced to eight, okay. yeah, and then from exporting any, any, from any ten seven. Any to reduce further reduce that from eight is yes, eight actually, ideal. Yeah, eight is okay. well, it's within a range. It's within a competitively global range. Some uh, countries are as good as four, 
some as good as five. So eight is not bad when we did a peer review okay. uh, for competitiveness. But ideally, by the time we have our single window operating, we'll be able to go further down. That's a soft, it's a portal, okay. an interface. We have something on, but it's not completely robust yet. So we're trying to have a full single window and, of course, in, in introduce new scanners into the system. So is there a time for all of this, especially yes, the window? Yes, this year, okay, this, this year, year, this year. It's actually imminent. The FEC memo is ready and it's mm -hmm. supposed to be scheduled any time now. Okay. And we hope, we really hope that the national trading platform goes forward as quickly as possible. Now, I know yes. that this was all, I mean, you talked about the private sector, but I know well, according to the, uh, your statement, it's uh, targeted actually at SMEs mm -hmm. in the country, and mm -hmm. there's like millions of them. So yeah. I'm thinking, I mean, yeah. in what way, what is different for them now? So you see, for SMEs, some of their inputs come in. So accessing the ports and even exporting, a lot of SMEs export goods. So now your pre-inspection uh, agents, you can now request that process. It's automated now. So that's another thing that has been done. And when you have uh, uh, agencies like NAFDAQ also, they've cleared the backlog as at December 2017. That's a big one. We okay. were really pushing very hard for that and trying to ensure that going forward, NAFDAQ sticks to its 90-day timeline. We're working on the reduction, uh, stratification of goods, goods that are simple, uh, produce that are simple to have less of hurdles. But for now, 90 days at least for even the most complex of uh, foods or medicine, no, not yeah, foods okay. or medicines, to be cleared within ninety days. How yeah. how easy was it to get all this? I mean, these these government agencies to get everybody on the same page because it would appear that sometimes they have their own system, and maybe I'm not sure if they were comfortable with it, but it was you know that's what they, that was their system. But mm -hmm. having to now tell them that okay, let's do something new that's easier, more efficient, and probably even makes your life easier. Mm -hmm. So how was it? Yeah, change is never easy. Uh, some agencies do welcome the help, do welcome the political push for reforms that they've been trying to get on board. Sometimes there are budgetary implications. Uh, sometimes there is resistance, but we do work as a team. And what we do is we continue to meet and to discuss and to question. Nobody likes being told that your system that you've been using for ages mm -hmm. just doesn't work. But we were led by the feedback of Nigerian businesses and we look at global best practices and really what's best fit for Nigeria, what we can accomplish, a lot of simple steps that can be removed out of the way, excess documentation and excess human interface that leads to rent-seeking opportunities. I know that it's early, it expired just yesterday, and I'm thinking, was there a feedback mechanism to maybe along the way so that you know what to do, if, if it's possible to tweak something, make it better or increase or something. Was there a feedback mechanism? Yeah, definitely. We do have some whistleblowing and mystery shopping ongoing. Uh, we had that for starting a business because you recall, even from last year, we had fixed the portal and the servers for 24 to 48 hour registration. And CAC has done several demos, but we were getting some feedback at, that in certain places, the 24 hour registration wasn't working all the time. So the mystery shopping really helped and the, there was troubleshooting and CAC has worked on that. So that's an example of how we troubleshoot and test. People do send us uh, reports sometimes, been some trouble with the, with the single interface, for instance, maybe at the airport, you still have some agencies still stopping passengers when they're not supposed to. And we took that up officially from the top as well. So it's work in progress. Uh, it's not uh, perfect, but definitely the journey is on. And I'd like to move also to the number of uh, initiatives and efforts that the state governments have put in. When you talk about particularly Lagos and Kano State, not to mention across uh, the country mm -hmm. we've been on a tour, uh, but, but Lagos State, the infrastructure development charge, for instance, for warehouses, there was a significant reduction that was removed by His Excellency the Governor, which led to a 90% uh, drop in the cost. Okay, so this yeah. is the this is the age you working with state governments now yes. to yes you know yes okay. yes so particularly with Lagos and Kano at the national level because Nigeria is ranked at the national level with Lagos and Kano population I mean selected by the World Bank and what everybody should note is that although we were also happy with the jump of twenty four places it's also very easy to unravel if you rest on your mm -hmm. oars if you feel you've arrived other countries aren't slipping. And we're also really particular about the impact and these reforms drilling down and getting the feedback from
from SMEs in particular. So for instance, a 90% reduction in warehouse infrastructure development charge okay. is huge. And that was a big, a big um, deliverable for Lagos State. Well, that's for Lagos State. I mean, it's easy to point out a couple of states that are where you can see the, that the reforms are obvious and impact is obvious, but we have 36 states. Yes. And the whole idea is to get yes. everybody on board because SMEs, businesses yes. are spread across mm -hmm. the country and even sometimes in rural areas. So I'm mm -hmm. thinking, do you have all these 36 states right on your radar and you're going from one yeah. state to another and saying, okay, what are you doing? What's changing? How do we work with you? We I think that's a lot of do. hours. That's a we lot actually of work. do. I'm trying to, to compartmentalize for you and for the viewers so that it's, more, uh, it's easier to digest. I've been talking about the national uh, ranking and okay. the impact how it drills down and that focuses on feedback from Lagos and Kano. But well, from July last year, uh, the National Economic Council approved replicating what PEBEC has done at the state level. You recall we met in Ogun State. Okay. Ogun State has done uh, several uh, consolidations, uh, whether it's on starting a business, um, a lot of reforms there. Two days ago I was in Kaduna. We've been hosted there before. They've done a lot of consolidations, going cashless, tax harmonization, um, starting a business. We were in Abia, we were in Aba, hosted okay. there, Gombe, um, going around the country. So there's buy-in, everybody oh, yes. recognizes, Everyone is on board. Okay, we I mean, I'll say, I'll say, you know, the, the, the governors have done an excellent job in, in rallying on this project and collaboration with the federal government for the first time. So the World Bank ranks Nigeria at a sub-national level. Mm -hmm. We're one of 11 uh, countries in the world with a population uh, over, we're one of uh, 11 countries that are ranked subnationally okay. in the world with the likes of Russia, Pakistan, uh, Mexico. And for the first time, we've had 100% participation from all the states, Northeast, everywhere. Yeah, everybody attended right of reply meetings. Um, told the World Bank exactly the reforms they've been working on. And these are measurable deliverables. That's why the tool is good. The empirical is good. It forces you to really track the life cycle of a business from the birth, uh, on and on, enforcing of contracts. You have a small claims court. Uh, your registering of property, your governor's consent processes, dealing with construction permits, how easy is it? Starting a business, very key, because that's really mm -hmm. the, the Where it all trigger. Begins, yeah. yeah. Well, let's take a quick break. We'll come back and pick up, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, from where we left off. There's a lot that we, we're going to talk about. Okay. Thank you for your time so <laughs> far. I've been speaking to Jumoke Oduwale, Coordinator, EBS Secretariat. Uh, still with me is Jumoke Oduwale, Coordinator, EBS Secretariat. We're continuing uh, looking at the impact of Nigeria's Ease of Doing Business initiatives. Jumoke, thank you for your time so okay. far. Let's talk about, I know you've mentioned that you're working with the states so that everything comes down, everybody is on board. But talk us Talk to us about the technical working group that's devising or coming up with four homegrown indicators mm -hmm. that you want to see, mm -hmm. that you're going to study and see how that can work for everybody. Yeah, so further to the approval by all the states to replicate ease of doing business, we knew that the World Bank was ranking Nigeria at a sub-national level uh, on certain indicators, but we felt when we spoke with the governors that there were things of interest to Nigeria and Nigerians that we wanted to focus on beyond what the World Bank was doing. So we decided to have a technical working group that focuses on uh, and representation from each of the regions. We have some private sector representation and then we have government, like governor's forum representation, so widespread representation. And we came up with four areas, uh, security and infrastructure, uh, the workforce and labor readiness, okay. a regulatory environment, and of course, transparency and information, access to information. So those are the four areas. We're coming up with a baseline study to be released later this year. We already have a survey tool, just waiting to have that perfected and approved. And then we come to, to Nigerian businesses and ask their opinion. We know that there's something to offer across each state and each region in the country. And we feel that businesses, both Nigerian businesses and foreign investors, should have more detailed, more granular information on what competitiveness uh, is across the country and where they want to house their businesses. Are you going to be doing this through chambers of commerce of states? Because I know that, I mean, for Lagos, and in, for instance, LCCI, I know that, I mean, that would be a good place to start mm -hmm. because, I mean, they have lots of mm -hmm. members who operate in the same environment. So is that mm -hmm. what you're going to do? We partner sure, with do them. Do all states have... Uh, well, there's the national, there's Nasima, okay. there's um, Lagos has a very vibrant one, Abuja has a vibrant one, there's some regional ones, um, there's Dawn Commission, there's some in the east. So we partner with, uh, there's NESG, 
there's NCCN. So there are a number of stakeholder engagements. You know, the hallmark and the secret to the success of the PEBEC is our far-reaching collaborative mm -hmm. strategy. So definitely, it's going to be widespread. We're working with the Bureau of Statistics, the Nigerian Investment Promotion Commission, uh, to make sure that there's full representation and that everybody gets their say. It's not a, it's not a competitive ranking, okay. so to speak. It's a baseline study to really showcase what every region has to offer, every state has to offer, and let the investors and the businesses make their decisions. So is there a timeline for this? When is yes, it kicking off? And what are your expectations in terms yeah. of when it will end? And yeah, this should be out. Uh, by our timeline, it should be out by Q4, okay. Yeah, or maybe slightly earlier than that. The questionnaires are almost ready. We need to look at how we would, we needed to spend some time uh, preparing a tool of how we would make sure, first of all, it took a while to decide what to um, measure as indicators. And then, you know, we had a lot of discussion. The governors were like, no, security has to be there. Of course, businesses want to know about infrastructure. Then we have a lot of complaints, uh, issues, discussions, regulatory environment. So states that are doing well and states that are doing not so well. It's also an opportunity to benchmark and have peer review. Then well, sorry to so, bother. What yeah. about those issues that you probably you can't even? I mean, there are stru like structural issues, power now, roads. I mean, these are things that you can't fix overnight. Yeah, yeah. You know that you know that um, doing business as a whole is soft infrastructure. Okay. Yeah. So even when you're measuring hard infrastructure, you're just given basically the information, mm -hmm. access to ports, access to markets, access to roads. It's factual. It is what it is. So we're not, that's why we're not ranking. So if a state is landlocked, they're landlocked. If a state has two ports, they have two ports. It's what, it, like a country, it's what you've been blessed with. But how are you using what you have? But if you're a state that is next door to a state that has a port, how are you accessing that? Have you built infrastructure, roads? Is there connectivity, rail projects? We're also looking at that. I mean, for instance, Cardinal State has a dry port, has an airport, has rail. Uh, is really, really ready to go by way of the region. And you see other states, Ogun State positioning mm -hmm. very much like that also. Like that. So those are the things that need to be showcased and, and for businesses to have the opportunity to make their decision. So if land, for instance, is too expensive in a particular place or taxes are too high, then you, you go to where it's more competitive. That's exactly what we're tracking, competitive and But I want us to quickly talk about land because I know that's also part of what you're working on. <laughs> I mean, titling, uh, CFO even down to what constitutes uh, a warehouse. And yeah. I'm thinking, I mean, yeah. that's, you're really going down into the nitty gritty of it. Yes. I mean, and that's a lot, lot yes. to track, but, but what's is, different now? Well, you know, that is something that is squarely in the purview of state governments, but encouraging them on what global best practice is, the amount of time it takes to get a COO, the cost, because it's really, you know, doing business is all about the speed, the cost, and the transparency. So encouraging all the states that these are the reforms. Uh, when doing business, when the World Bank ranks uh, states, they rank the commercial center, and they're not actually tracking, um, say, Abelkuta with Abel. They're tracking Abelkuta with Cape Town. They're tracking Abelkuta with uh, New York. So you will know where you rank globally. With, I mean, clear disparities in infrastructure. It's the same methodology levels. because we're tracking the enabling environment. Okay. It's the enablers. So we're tracking the cost. We're tracking the speed. Okay. That doesn't have anything to do with your infrastructure. Your infrastructure. Yeah, okay. yeah. Sure. So. Okay, let's talk about the omnibus omnibus bill. And I know mm. the PEBEC is working on a bill. You want it, I mean, hoping yeah. for it to be passed as an executive bill by the National yeah. Assembly. Mm -hmm. And you want this to be institutionalized. Mm -hmm. Tell us about mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. The omnibus bill is really a legacy project in collaboration with the National Assembly. As you know, we partnered very well last year. And we started working on this omnibus bill. National Assembly has a technical working group called the NASPA um, in collaboration with the Nigerian Bar Association, uh, Section of Business Law, and NESG, other stakeholders again. So we've all come together to look at legacy issues in our laws, you know, relics from colonial era, things that just are not practical and just really um, impede business. So we've collated a, a couple of them together. We started testing with stakeholders. We had a quarterly business forum, some were tested. And what it is is that we're hoping to have it passed by Q3 this year. Yeah, we're hoping to have it passed. We're still, you know, encouraging feedback. 
we're sticking to business reform. Business reform. <laughs> yes, we're okay. sticking to business reform, but the things like tax harmonization. But another thing that I should mention is that the National Assembly on its own has about 11 priority bills that they're hoping to pass. And we had, for instance, uh, tax harmonization in the omnibus bill. And then the National Assembly are putting together a tax harmonization bill on their own. So we're definitely supporting them, and we're now members of that technical working group. So that's the way of the partnership. National Assembly is really prioritizing the CAMA, the okay. Companies and Allied Matters uh -huh. Act, which was part of the omnibus bill. But since they're accelerating it, we're supporting again and just lending whatever support we can give to make that process um, be expedited as soon as possible. So this is the way we work back and forth. They have their priority bills and then other things that are not in the priority bill that we scoop from across the way. You even spoke about PPPs and some of the things yeah, that we've we'll learned. Get, we'll get to that, I mean, <laughs> that, that for the airport. So, okay, let's, let's, let's go into that right now. I mean, airport mm. concessioning, this has been a sticking point for the country for past administrations. And now this administration is going to take uh, have a go at it. So obviously the first step, okay, but let's talk about when. When is this going to happen? So I'm pleased to say the Honorable Minister of State Aviation, he has his FEC approval. And I know that he's put together an advisory team. I don't have the timeline, but this is something that we're really looking forward to. And we know that he's, he's prioritizing that project. Oh, okay. Hopefully there will be interest. I mean, the private sector is always willing. Well, if there it's is a good interest. deal, why not? There so is obviously interest. With our issue... flagship airport, there is interest. Okay. So big issue will be, I mean, the, the public-private partnership, mm -hmm. the PPP model. It's mm -hmm. uh, has been sticky in the past. It's been controversial in the past. Mm -hmm. And what is the plan for? For it this time for concessioning. Well, there've been the a lot of there've been a lot of models. I'll just talk generally. There've been a lot of learnings from our past PPP experiences. I know that we've had meetings just talking as a group with the BPP and the ICRC and making sure that timelines, sticking to all that we need to do. We as a government, again, we give an enabling environment for whoever the private sector counterpart is. They can be sure that we'll adhere to the timetables. We'll do. Uh, due diligence and our role from a regulatory perspective within the times allotted because a lot of these things is time time lags which leads to costs and delays so we are committed as an administration to be on time in in matters like ppps no i mean for obviously there's always a document mm -hmm. of the rules rules of i mean engagement mm -hmm. and fair play that for each party to adhere to their own side of the bargain. Mm -hmm. So what assurances do, do investors, potential investors who will come and you know, take over the running of these airports that this time around there won't be any, every, both parties will adhere to the rules of the game and that even when this administration is no longer here, there won't be any policy somersault. The agreement will stay as it is. These agreements are legally binding. And we have a full uh, legal system to take care of that, down to arbitration and exit. Well, it's happened in the past where, I mean, we're on also told sides. that it was in a legal document. No, but no, they, it's they happened in the past forward. on both sides. We're going off track, okay. but I would say that it's happened in the past on both sides. Uh, private sector investments are, investors are not without their own fault, and they're not without failing to deliver on what they have agreed to in the mm -hmm. past. But, you know, you can go on with the blame game. The most important thing, and I'll just speak from my legal background, is having clarity and having clear deliverables and everybody following the timeline and holding each other accountable. That's what makes PPPs succeed. Okay, last time we talked, uh, I mean, this was on Twitter, and I got so many responses about, and there were majorly, actually, complaints. Okay. Like, you know, we're doing this, uh, what about this? Uh, there's, we haven't gotten any response. I mean, I, obviously, that would happen. Mm -hmm. But it also made me to ask the question, uh, ask myself, well, there's so many SMEs in the country. Mm -hmm. If I go on the street and ask the average SME and say, what's different about your business? Now, you're aware that there's a public, are you aware that there's an initiative by the federal government to make your life easier, either by registering just a general basis environment? And I wondered, what would the response be? Who is it that, who, who, at what level is it, a business, at what level would I go and ask? And they will say, yes, we are actually feeling the impact. I mean, I think from what we've been, and, I, and I'll take the point, first of all, it's never a situation where, I mean, globally, there's never an environment where there are no complaints. And it's a journey. It's a marathon. I think if you look at, for instance, the Corporate Affairs Commission in 2015, and you go year on year to now, in 2015, we were not talking about online registration and portals. It took forever. It was manual, about six different forms. There was nothing like your TIN, 
being integrated. You had to finish at Corporate Affairs Commission, then go to FIRS registration, all manual, all tedious, all potentially exposed to rent-seeking behaviors, all delays, all costs. That has improved significantly. Last year, the server of the CAC was moved to a private sector company, main one, so it's stabilized. The portal, not without issues once and, uh, you know, time and again, particularly due to congestion, so increasing cap capacity for that has been ongoing. But you have a situation where CAC consolidated about six forms into one, integrated with the FIRS so that your TIN is by the J Joint okay. Tax Board uh, right. consolidated. These are things that are felt by the SMEs. Okay. We were at an event in Kano two days ago, and an SME, a, a lady came to register her business, and she got her certificate right there okay. within two hours. Jumake, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much for yeah. talking to us today. Pleasure <laughs> having you on the You're show. Jumake Odoole, yeah. coordinator, Ibis, secretary.